Hello, I'm Richard from Town Valley Aquatics and also Pond Guru Landscaping. I'm sitting next to this lovely long stream here which leads into a big wildlife pond that we've just put in. Unfortunately, my camera broke down a few days into this build, so there's quite a big chunk of the build missing. But this is how the pond was when we got here. This is quite a large wildlife pond behind me. The line has gone for whatever reason. It doesn't hold water anymore. There's a load of this big grass, gets to about 2.5 meters. It does grow with a very sharp root. That may be the cause of the problem. That's all over the pond. We're gonna take the whole pond out and renew it. This is the current state of it now. It is very well established. There's loads of nice plants in it, but unfortunately they're all gonna to have to come out to get the liner out. There's cobbles all the way around the sides. The pond is just like a dish shape. And these cobbles aren't secured in at all, meaning that you can't really walk around the edge very well without fear of knocking those cobbles into the pond. This is the cascade, just your general jumble of cobbles and stones. It comes out from underneath this bridge, but we're actually going to extend that up here. It's going to sweep round and we're going to ramp this lot up. It's going to come out of a tunnel all the way back down to the pond. Because this is an established wildlife pond and there's a very good chance that there may be a lot of wildlife in it, we've got a pond up here. We're just busy pumping water into there, it's very mucky, but that's where we're going to store all the wildlife and any of the plants that we're going to keep. We've been going now for about an hour and a half. We've cleared most of the stones off from around the sides. We've still got all of the bottom of the pond to do and that's going to be an absolute nightmare because it's so bound up with lilies. But we've made some nice wildlife discoveries and we've kept quite a few of the plants which we're just storing in polystyrene boxes here we've got some marsh marigold water forget-me-not a little bit of oxygenating weed and there's still a lot of lilies to come out and also a lot of oxygenating weed but they will go in here Here's just a brief rundown of what we've found so far. Got a common frog here. Oh, there's a newt there as well. That's a female smooth newt. Little male common toad. That's a female palmate newt. Female smooth newt. And to our surprise, we've got some real monsters. That's a female great crested newt. Beautiful. There's another female. Male palmate newt. There's a male great crested. Now before any keyboard gangsters out there decide to start typing about how it's illegal to handle these newts, it's illegal to do this, illegal to do that. First point is, we didn't know there was great crested newts in here. Second point, it is not illegal to handle them, and store them basically look after them if there's a problem with the pond and you're in proven habitat which we are so that's the end of that I don't want to say any stupid comments about handling newts and so on we know exactly what we're doing and we've got the facilities to look after them they're all gonna go back in the pond well we finally got the pond emptied and cleaned out found dozens and dozens of newts all sorts of types frogs, toads, dragonfly larvae they're all safely housed in here, along with the lilies and a large percentage of the oxygenating plant. And under ordinary circumstances, we'd whip the liner out, take the underlay up, shape the hole, put underlay and liner back down. But you can see behind me here, there's a nation of Norfolk reed, Phragmites australis, coming through the liner. It's coming through all along this side behind me, and it's even through into the bottom here. There's a bit. That's absolutely knackered this liner right the way across here. Because most of the roots for this plant are between the liner and the underlay, so what we're going to have to do is whip the liner out, spray this off with glyphosate weed killer. Hopefully that'll go right down into the roots. Then pull the underlay up a few days later. That should expose more roots spray that off again, give it a few more days, and then dig the pond out. 
we don't want to dig the pond out now because even the smallest piece of root left under here is going to go through the new liner which will undo all of our work see the roots are all over holes in it everywhere and it's the same story right up into the cascade so we're going to have to spray it all off it's all going to have to be dead before any possibility of putting new underlay and new liner down and because of the problems with that thick weed poking through the liner we decided not to go with a liner for the rebuild we went for concrete covered by two coats of render and then paint in the pond and all the way up the stream to give it a nice solid base and prevent anything puncturing it from underneath now this is the point in the job where we'd normally be putting underlay in and liner but unfortunately when we stripped out all of that hard liner piercing grass um, we found that it was just all over the place it's in the garden as well that surrounds the pond so we daresn't put liner in the pond even a small little piece of root from the grass will grow it'll come straight through the liner and ruin the job so we're going to concrete the whole pond so we're putting a layer of concrete down and then we're going to render over the top and then paint that that's the pond concreted now and we're going around the outside with a nice thick layer of render using render and sand PVA glue and retarder so it's just sand and cement mixed four to one with retarder and PVA glue. The sides of the pond were also painted with PVA mix and that helps the render to stick to it. And once it starts going off around the sides we've just been brushing it with a soft brush. Now we were really lucky because the original pond had a big concrete collar all the way around the outside and that gave us a lovely firm base to cement these big sandstone slabs all the way around the side and where we didn't put the slabs we put cobbles so these cobbles here sweep around this bottom edge and they make a beach effect. Now this pond was really overgrown so we took a lot of the plants out and I stored them at home in my polytunnel in waterproof containers and when we'd finished the job we put all the decent plants back including the lilies which we repotted. Now this pond is approximately six meters long by four meters wide by half a meter deep which in feet is 20 feet long by 14 feet wide by just under two foot deep. Just some quick notes on the concrete mix. We mixed that up as like a 3-2-1 mix. We used three gravel, two sand, one cement. That was the first thing we put down. That created the actual structure of the pond. And then for the render, we used a 4-1 mix, which is four parts soft sand, i.e. yellow building sand, with one part cement. A good glug of PVA glue, and also some waterproofer and retarder in there. That was the first coat. Second coat, same mix, but we used render and sand. It was then painted with pond paint from Ask Coatings. The details of all of this is in the video description. I quite often get questions about that, so I thought I would mention it in the video and I'll also put it in the description. Now the pump that's in this pond is an Aqua One Stingray 7000. As that pump was in the pond when we came, we did reuse it, but we changed the pipe. We changed it from inch pipe as it was originally up to inch and a quarter pipe that's inch and a quarter internal diameter 32 mil now originally the stream was just made of loose cobbles so much of the effect of the flow and water was being lost we've actually cemented all of these in so all of this lot is solid it's all cemented in and that makes the water go exactly where we want it to go
hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Sorry it took so long to make. Um, as I say, I had some problems not only with this pond, with those grasses and so on, and also a lot of rain, but I had problems with the video camera as well. Hence the some bits missing. I do apologize for that. Thanks for watching.